thing about superheroes, no matter which one you're talking about, Spider-Man, the Hulk, Catwoman, and even if you create an entirely new one, this would still be true. Superheroes don't have super smell. Think about it. What separates a superhero from an ordinary person? Powers, right? Most are incredibly strong. Some can fly, others have laser beam eyes. But can you imagine one with super smell? Superman's flying through LA on his way to rescue a drowning girl from a sewer. His eyes are blistering from the millions of smog particles he's inhaling per second, and suddenly the stench of a million people's shit smacks him in the face like a fist. <laughs> oh, fuck this. I was born with an incredibly heightened sense of smell. <laughs> but alas, I, I cannot fly or lift a truck above my head. Wherever I go, I'm bombarded by odors, the constant pong of life. And let me tell you something. When you magnify any smell, it doesn't ever become nice. <laughs> when I was young, I, I didn't have any friends. It wasn't as if I was socially inadequate or, or reclusive, I, I just couldn't stand the smells of other kids. <laughs> there was this kid called Tommy Norris, right, who smelled of dough and flour in the morning and acrid sweat from recess onwards. The, the first girl that ever liked me, Jenny, uh, Jenny Bro Broad, Broad, Jenny Broad, was an evening showerer and had nightmares. She never told me that, but the, the fear caused her hormones to ooze out all over her clothes and skin. She tried to kiss me once, but her halitosis mixed with white bread and peanut butter made me gag. <laughs> I hit my distaste a little better in high school, but there were so many odours that made me chuck, and the, the lingering rancid carrot smell of vomit and bile in my mouth kept me in a state of perpetual weakness. Teachers said I was distracted. A bit compared to that Jean-Baptiste Grindelil, that murderer from the novel Perfume, <laughs> totally unfair. I'm not a psycho serial killing type. He dedicated his life to distilling pheromones from dead redheads. All I wanted was to silence the screaming stench of urban life. So I experimented, right, with, with drugs and um, booze, tobacco. My first cigarette was like putting my head inside a dirty old fireplace filled with burning plastic. If I got hammered, I'd be just as obnoxious as the next outrage drinker, but, but when I came to, I could remember what happened by the chronology of smells from the night before. Well, you know, no, smell is the, the closest link to memory, right? So wherever I go, I have my memories forced quite literally down my throat. The city, the building I work in, the stone stairs and greasy metal railings, the fish market smell of the Asian immigration specialist on level three, my PC's charred disk drive, festering walls of coffee breath, my boss's aftershave. The only thing I truly couldn't stand was my boss. Five years my junior. His aftershave brings me to the memory of a man I despise like the devil himself. Whenever I saw the boss, I was filled with disgust and hatred and self-loathing. Which is a pity, because he was a nice guy. On the last day I ever went outside, I visited my sister. The eggy, coleslaw and mayonnaise smell of her kid's sperm was on every towel in the house. And some of it was in Jen's underpants drawer, which is fairly disturbing. She asked me how it was going. Terrible. I don't sleep, I hate my job, and I hate the way everything in the city smells. So, move to the country. Go somewhere natural, have a tree change. It stinks there too. There's nothing but cow shit at every turn. <laughs> Oh, come on, John. 
A lifetime of this torture, where his sister doesn't even get what I'm suffering. I would cut off my nose if I thought it would help. Nothing is pleasant for me, nothing. Roses are so pungent they make my head spin. Chocolate is like grease drizzled over burnt sugar. Even the fluoride in tap water makes me feel like I'm swallowing acid. Oh, John, stop exaggerating. I can even smell the last time you pissed. She didn't ask me to leave, but things were mighty awkward after that little outburst. So. <laughs> it seemed to happen a lot with Jen. I was always offending her, so uh, I made an excuse and left. Only minutes later, and um, that smell wrapped around my throat like a noose. Cognac, cigars, and my boss's aftershave. An old man had come out of his house. His appearance meant nothing to me, but I knew exactly who he was. The memory enveloped me. The almost smell of my freshly laundered pillow. Bark from the tree outside and sap as possum's claws dug into its branches. A leafy breeze as the wind was sucked in and something unspeakably unclean as someone entered my room. Suddenly, Cigars, playing cards, and that faint tinge of piss as his hand clamped over my mouth. Cognac on his breath, a, a weak, cottony odour as my shorts tore. The smell of my fear, my sweat glands opening, salty at that moment, but stale as I cried into the morning, and blood. The metallic, steely smell of blood, sharp like a razor, rank as it congealed on my body. This old man now lived just down the road from my sister, from my sister's kid. I saw red, blinded by the memory of his strong, callous fingers pressing against my mouth, and I, I pull him inside and into the kitchen, turning my head away from the stench of the aftershave. I sniff out for the cutlery drawer, groping around for a knife. My hand wraps around a big one and I slash it towards him. Stab, 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 five times, eight times, nine times! I don't know how long I lay there before freshly polished boots and pepper spray entered the room. Snapping unwashed steel around my wrists. The overwhelming effluence of the holding cell. Days of stench, weeks of it. <laughs> Court didn't believe what I said the old man had done to me. Tried to rob him and lost it when he refused to cooperate. My sister knew none of what went on back then, so she gave me a crappy character reference. Oh, no, honestly, I, I don't know him that well. Maybe he is capable of snapping. I could appeal the sentence. But I actually cope in here. Thugs in this place stick as much as any other human being, but they don't wear that aftershave. I got 25 years to get used to the blood and the piss and the sweat and the sperm. But hey, it was 25 years to a superhero. Captain Nausea! Fuck that.